So every mechanic you talk to these days will tell you, buy a Toyota, buy a Honda. Please don't ever buy a Toyota like this one. Not the Sequoia, don't get me wrong. Sequoia is an excellent truck. You find the right one to buy, you will have it for a very long time with very little issues. But this particular Sequoia is the perfect example why you should not just feel at ease that you're buying a Toyota and just buy it without an inspection and just pay what they're asking for and it's a Toyota, how bad can it be? It can be extremely bad. And that's what we're gonna show you here, how unfortunate the owner of this, current owner of this car that just bought this, hoping they will get two, three years out of this until the market settles so they can buy something else and how mistaken they were. Let's get started. We're gonna inspect this car in a way that majority of people inspect Toyotas and how their reactions are. I see this all the time, see people, how they are about their cars and when the truth comes out, that's when that changes immediately. So let's start kind of touring this, this Sequoia. First glance, everything is original. This has never been an accident. It's actually, this is a factory paint. Maybe a little bit of rust here, but hey, it's 2001 with over 200,000 miles. Eh, it's okay, it's not bad. Headlights are a little yellowed. Again, it's an older truck, it's okay. We can live with that, we can maybe buff this out with some toothpaste or whatever. Let's uh, continue our tour on the side. Oh, what do we have here? These are newer Cooper tires. Not my favorite brand of tires, but hey, they're newer tires, they're decent. Paint is nice, everything looks great. I mean, it's looking, this is looking great so far. I am liking this truck a lot. Then we open the driver's door. Door handle is a little bit, a little bit loose, but it works. Then we look inside. Yeah, the seat has a little bit of wear, but again, it's an older truck. It uh, seen, seen better days. That's okay. Then this is usually your biggest red flag. When you see stuff like this, folks, we have problems. But that's okay. This is a fuel door. Maybe the handle broke, even though the handle works perfectly fine. I'll tell you why this is a red flag in a little bit. Let's continue our unsuspecting car buyer inspection. All the window switches work fine, except this one, it's pushed down. Keep that mental note. We have this cable and we have this window switch. Keep a mental note of that. It's a beautiful closing door. We look at the back one, this handle's good. I mean, look at that inside. Looks beautiful, right? Clean, decent, yeah, the leather has a few cracks, but Beautiful, and we look a little bit here. Yeah, this is starting to fade. We can live with that, it's a cheap car, it's okay. A little bit of this trim coming off, that's okay. Then you close this door. Beautiful close, because by the way, VIN stickers are all there, so we're good. Now we look at this quarter panel right here. It's beautiful, it's all original, all not been painted, everything looks beautiful. Then we walk to the back, to the third red flag. Cable. That's broken. But okay. Maybe it's just a thing with the sequoias. The cables are just hanging off of it. Keep that mental note, because we're going to talk about it. Let's see, show you the action of opening this back door. You pull the cable. You can't really pull it here. You have to be very careful. And... Okay, there's a lot of noise inside this door. Most people will say, oh, maybe the glass broke. They'll start making excuses for this car. Folks, the noise you heard inside this door is rust. And really keep that mental note in your mind. We look at the back. Lord, you look at that. All nice. Yeah, it does have a few scratches. Maybe this was a work truck at some point. Not bad, it's all right, it's a, that's an old car, no problem, right? Most people at this point, they don't even know that this glass comes down. They're, it should come down and then, okay. You hear all that noise? That's a red flag, but people will skip over that. Then we come to this side of it, where uh, things are looking great, right? I mean, tires are all matching, they're all new. Paint is in excellent condition. A little scuff here, no problem. 
Let's look at this side of the door. Same thing. Whoa. This is where people will glance over this part. This is your first major red flag. But you know what? Unfortunately, people will look at what they want to see. They will not look down. But then here's how the typical mentality of a car buyer today, I see this all the time. I see nothing, it's okay. I don't see, it. it's not visible rust, it's okay. Keep that red flag. Then, we look at the front. I mean, we have pretty much the same thing. Passenger seat is in perfect shape. All this is original paint. This car has never been in an accident. People are fascinated by cars that have never been in an accident. Okay, well, I think we have a deal, right? This is ticking all my boxes, not perfect. You know, there's a few things, we can maybe fix them up real quick and we're good. The biggest red flag in this is, if the rust was not enough of a big flag, is the broken things. You notice that they have a pattern. Let's roll back around and we'll talk about the red flag. I call this a hammer hand owner, where they never fix anything and they break everything. This is broken because they handled through such force that it broke. Instead of fixing it, they just dangle the cable here and they just pull on this cable and open this door with force. And then the same thing with the fuel door. They pulled on this handle so strong that they broke it and instead of fixing it, they just dangle the cable because they know they're gonna break it again. Hammer hand owner. And then I'll show you one more thing, actually why this truck is in our shop and why I am forced to work on it just to get the customer to actually drive this from here and get rid of it. Let's go on the other side of the car so you can see it. So this is what made this truck stay in my shop. Otherwise, a truck like this, I would just give them the keys and have a nice day and you're gonna see why in a little bit. But uh, do you notice something is going on here? And uh, this is the shifter. This is the last absolute red flag. The shifter broke. I have never in my entire career I have, have I seen a Toyota shifter break like this on a Sequoia or on any Toyota for that matter. I mean, this giant piece of aluminum just sheared off completely. And now we can't really shift the car. This is how you shift it. I have to by hand shift it just to get it in and out, out and move it around the shop as we need to until we get this piece that is extremely hard and unavailable at the moment because otherwise the customer cannot figure out how to put this. This is just extremely difficult. That is, should, should have been the biggest red flag. This shifter was hanging by a thread and you could barely get it in park until you can't anymore. The person who owned this car before was just too rough on it. He broke all this stuff. I'm surprised the rest of the interior is still holding. But wait, some people are rough on their cars. Maybe he took care of it. it does have 246,000 miles. It's not that bad, right? Let's go look under the hood. You will see where the real red flags start happening in the grand finale when you look underneath Let's it. Let's open the hood. Let's take a look. Well, alrighty then. Where do you look at this beautiful sight? Toyota's possibly best engine ever made. 2U ZFE, 4.7 liter, time and belt engine, bulletproof. Usually you go to cars in the junkyard, like you will go visit this one soon, I hope. You will see this engine will run perfectly fine. That's how these engines, that's how good these engines are. Let's take a look around. I don't see a time and belt sticker, not the end of the world. Perhaps this used to be a time and belt sticker at some point, but it's faded, indicating it's old. Perhaps we need a time and belt, not the end of the world. Maybe we'll take a cover, we'll check it out. Let's look at the top of the radiator. It is not an original radiator, but it looks a little older. It is a little bit wet here. Perhaps we have a small radiator leak. Not a big deal. But then we start looking at the more serious stuff. And I'll put a little clip here, of this car starting and driving.
you hear that ticking noise? Well, that ticking noise is something very common with the 4.7 and even other iterations of this engine. Exhaust manifolds rust and leak or develop cracks and they start making that. Usually they start only when it's cold and it's quiet down, then even when it's not cold. This one has that very expensive repair. You have to remove the exhaust manifolds and usually they're rusty and they're really difficult to remove, but that's okay. And now we're, though we're starting to make excuses for this car, but that's what the typical mentality of the Toyota buyer who's never had a Toyota, they start making these excuses. Don't do that. That's the first mistake. But then we look more. I look over here. Most people will look at this and be like, meh, it's just a little oil leak. Not a big deal. It's just a valve cover. And they'd be right. It's just a valve cover, right? But now you're taking your excusing to the next level. Then we go look on the other side. We look at this right here. Valve cover is leaking as well. You look at these power steering lines, they're also leaking, the hoses. At this point, I hope you have drawn the line and said, you know what? I am seeing GM style problems here. I'm seeing lawyer leaks, I'm seeing exhaust leaks, I'm seeing power steering leaks, I'm seeing signs of a hammer hand on this car. We're gonna want to get an inspection on this car. We're not gonna want to just do a post-purchase inspection. One of the worst ideas on the planet. I look at the brake fluid, looks like tar, never been serviced. Nothing has been done to this car. Never been crashed, but nothing else. It was just driven. But that all does not sound so bad. How about this? I will invite you right now, as we go take a look very carefully underneath this car, so you can see why you will soon, hopefully, find this car in the junkyard and you can get this beautiful bulletproof engine out of it because that's where this belongs. Let's go take a look. Let's take a look underneath the Sequoia. And the first thing you look at, you know, you look at this section, meh, we have some rust. That's okay, you know, it's a Midwest car, it's okay. But wait, we have new calipers. That's good, that's very good. That's, yeah, somebody's been taking care of this car, right? More excuses. Then I look, to me as a Toyota technician, I look at this ball joint. This is the original ball joint. That is one bump away from falling off. That's okay. You know, we can replace that. Ball joint and these are very easy to separate from the control arm, which is a brilliant design. But then we start looking here. You see all the oil leaks. Okay, that's the valve cover that we talked about. You know, it's leaking really bad. Well, maybe we'll get that taken care of. And I'm with you. If that's all the car needs, it's not bad. But then we come right here. We start looking at this. This little area right here where the rack and pinion is. You see all the oil right here. And it is so much that This is actually not a rack and pinion leak. The rack and pinion itself, right around this bushing, is rotted off. But again, we can replace a rack and pinion. This is super easy for bolt. But then you start looking at the little stuff. These lines are notorious to rot. And something this rusty, you notice somebody's been patching. You see this patchwork right here? If I push on this line, it's just gonna break on the other end because this line is so rusty that somebody's been patching it up. That's okay, we can replace the lines, but here's where the problems start. You try to get this line, you're gonna break every single line on its way because the car is so rusty, but it's doable. You know, if you bought this cheap, we can do this. Then you look up, there is all kinds of oil right on top of the exhaust that is probably not healthy for you and your family, but Again, valve cover is leaking. But this is where all of this is irrelevant fluff compared to things like this. Now, initially when you look at it, it looks okay. But then, that is not okay. This is the, your first giant red flag. 
Folks, this frame is making me and the guys that are helping me film extremely nervous standing underneath it. And the only way we will stand underneath it is on a drive-on lift. You lift this truck, it will fall off the lift. You hit a bump strong enough on this truck, it will break in half or something catastrophic is going to happen. We look at stuff like the brake lines. Hmm. Love Toyota loves to coat their brake lines and then stop. These things are, uh, somebody sprayed them at some point, but they're still getting there. Then we look at this relic, the fuel filter. Somebody decided to break this fitting instead of replacing it, they put a little clamp to hold it. That's a safety concern, but that's okay. That can be fixed. But then we look at the grand finale of things, and this is like two double grand finales. Let's come out and let's look at the edge of the frame. Like when you look at this frame from here, you, people usually will lean underneath the truck, they look here, oh, it does have a little bit of rust, even though this is, when you see scale like this, that's no good. When you see this appearance, I want you to really see it. When you see scale like this, like this, the, the exact color, if I, if I ding this with a hammer, it's going to go in and cave. I'm not going to add more to this truck. It already has enough. But then if you just move your eyes, scan across the frame, we arrive at this section, which is completely gone. Here's what's going to happen with this. This is a support piece. This is holding the rear end. This is gone. This is all completely gone, folks. This is just, yeah. Some people will refer to this as Swiss cheese. That's exactly what that is. This is about to break. And when this breaks, you are going to cause yourself severe injury in an accident and others around you. That is not safe. The end of that conversation. But wait, it's actually not even the worst part about this frame. Let's look at the next section. Let me move this lift so we can... So we can look at the grand finale of this car. Would you, ladies and gentlemen, look at this? This is completely gone, this section. I mean, if I keep going, we're just going to cut this in half, basically. Same thing here. This frame is completely over. It's done. That's it. The end. And you know what the best part is? It has a tow hitch. I really hope nobody decides to use this because basically you're towing your load on this rusty frame that now is making a mess on the floor of my shop. Folks, this truck is done. There is nobody in their right mind will say, oh, I'm going to weld a piece here. Please don't do that because I see some of my customers trying to do that. You get rot on the frames where you have holes. It's over. Move on. Save your family. If you don't care about your family, save our families that are driving around you sharing the same road. This car should not be on the road. And I actually really dislike the fact that the state of Illinois does not have safety inspections. That's just what they decided. We don't have safety inspections. Some states at least do. So they can tell the owner, hey, this is a safety problem. You cannot drive this car anymore. Protect others if you don't care about yourself. But then we even look past that. Look at this rear end. Look at this section exactly right here. This is something that is super common with Toyotas. When you see rear ends that are getting like this, and I don't want to push it because I don't want to cause more issues. They rust here, and this actually ends up breaking and leaking. Can you imagine the monumental cost to replace the entire axle housing? Can you imagine the second I go and try to take this bolt so we can remove this arm so I can replace this. As soon as I hit this, this entire section falls and potentially this whole frame collapses on my head. This is such a bad idea, folks. You go buy a truck like this without looking at it, just because you saw it was a one owner, no accident, it's relatively clean, it's all there, it's very cheap. You jump on it, wow, I found a, I found a deal. This is not a deal. This is a deal not even for the junkyard. A junkyard will look at this and be like, there's nothing I can sell out of this. It's done. Maybe I'll take the tires and sell them, a seat or a mirror, but that's about it. Well, even the mirrors, they have the problem with them. I mean, 
if you see rust like this on the body, like even this is all completely gone, here we go. That's the body, that doesn't do anything. The frame is what you look at in these cars, folks. If this was not a frame car, if this was a new body, this would be a major problem because this is where you lift the, the car from and this is a structural piece, but in body over frame trucks, this is not an issue. And that's what people are looking at. They're not looking at the frame. This is not good, folks. Please do not put your family in a car like this just because it's a Toyota that hasn't been in an accident. This is very bad. Folks, please, just because the badge is a Toyota and everybody gives you a thumbs up on YouTube does not mean you should jump and buy it. Be very careful. The owner of this car, he bought it for a very cheap price. But the problem is he wasted that money because now you can't even, you can barely drive this thing. You have to fumble the shifter. So you got to fix that at least so you can drive it to the destination to get rid of it. And then it has so many problems. I mean, the list is unbelievable how many problems this car have. And 90% of those problems have to do with rust. The Sequoia, this generation Sequoia is one of the best trucks there is. If you find the right one though, find a bad one like this one, it's just an endless money pit. And before you know it, it's beyond repair. It's over. Don't be welding frames and patching things. Don't do that. What's the point? If you're going to patch a Toyota and, and zip tie it together, why are you buying it to begin with? Just go buy that GMC Acadia, I guess, since you're going to zip tie it anyways and, and mend it every two days. Might as well not pay high price for a Toyota. Folks, be very careful. These days, there are a lot of bad cars out there. And please, just because it says Toyota or Honda or some good brand for reliability, don't just jump head, head first into buying one without an inspection. This is so important, folks. Educate yourself. It's not about paying a mechanic or going to hire somebody to inspect the car. Educate yourself. People like me, people like many other mechanics out there on the internet are teaching you how to inspect cars, what to look for, what the common problems are, you got to do your research, not just research what's a good car. What are their common problems? What do you look for? What are the problems you need to be aware of and check them? And when you see them, don't start making excuses. Oh, but I can fix it. I can, this is not bad. Walk away. The whole point if you're buying a Toyota is that it's a reliable car. Don't buy one with every single common problem. That's just not a good thing. Folks, Best of luck to you, and I, from the bottom of my heart, I wish you make good choices when you go buy an older car, because it could be really good, but it could be really bad, like this one. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos, and until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have yourself a wonderful day.